Some years back, I made a DIY exhaust for my 62 Galaxy. It's over 18 feet long, and if you think it looks a little bit like a tuning fork, you'd be right. <music> Greetings, fellow DIYer, and welcome to another episode of I Didn't Shoot Any Video For That. When I got the exhaust installed in my car, it functioned very well. I was very happy with it until I went for my first test drive. At about 2000 RPM, I had a really nasty resonance drone. Now, if you're not familiar with that concept, basically the frequency of the sound matches the natural resonating frequency of the exhaust. When this happens, you get a loud drone that continues to get louder and louder until you change RPM. In the case of my car, this nasty drone happened at right around 2000 RPMs. There are several ways to solve this issue. You can get very specific mufflers that are designed to eliminate resonance drone. I've also heard that on a dual exhaust like this, if you use two different mufflers, that will help eliminate the issue. For me, I chose to use science. If you make a wave resonator tube and add it to your exhaust, it will eliminate the drone. Now, there is a little bit of math involved in figuring out how to build your wave resonator tube. And I realize, for many of you, math is a four-letter word. But I'm going to walk you through the steps and show you that it's really not that complicated and the results are excellent. A couple things you need to know for a wave resonator tube. First, the tube must be one quarter the wavelength frequency of the drone. Now, that sounds overly complicated, but we're going to come back to that here in a minute and talk about the wavelength frequency of the drone. The tube must be capped on one end. This is critical because the way a wave resonator tube works is the sound waves move down the tube and then are reflected back and it helps cancel out some of the sound that is in the exhaust. For this to work properly, it must be mounted perpendicular to the exhaust pipe. Now for most of us, especially since these tubes can be anywhere from a foot and a half to three feet long, that's impractical. There's no easy way to mount it perpendicular to the exhaust and have the correct length. The solution is to use mandrel bent tubing so that where it mounts to the exhaust, it is perpendicular and then it gently slopes around. Now back to the wavelength frequency of the drone. This is something that we have to calculate. And this frequency is the RPM where the drone is happening times the number of pulses per revolution divided by 60. So in my case, 2000 RPMs, four pulses per revolution divided by 60 equals 133.34 Hertz. Once we have this number, we can use it to calculate the wavelength of our drone. And that is the speed of sound divided by the frequency of the drone. The speed of sound is normally referenced in meters, but then you'd have to convert to feet anyway. So I'm starting with the speed of sound in feet per second, 1,125.33. We divide that by 133.34 hertz, and we get 8.44 feet. If you remember, the first characteristic of a wave resonator tube was that it is one quarter the wavelength frequency of the drone. Now that we have the wavelength frequency of 8.44, we can multiply it by 0.25, which would be the same as dividing by four, and we get a tube that is 2.11 feet long. Armed with this information, I ordered up some mandrel tubing I cut it so that I could have it come off the exhaust the way I needed to, and then I added a piece to the end and capped it off. Now I needed to be able to attach this to my exhaust, which meant drilling a hole in my exhaust. And the easiest way to do that was with a hole saw. What I didn't want to have happen 
was to have the pilot drill bit drill through the other side of the exhaust. So what I did is I took a quarter inch drill bit, drilled a hole in the exhaust. I then took a piece of quarter inch rod and chucked it up in my hole saw as a guide. This allowed me to drill out the hole without having any risk of drilling through the other side. Once I had the holes, all I had to do was weld my tubes into place. They actually go the opposite direction of exhaust flow, and that's okay. It's not about the flow of exhaust, it is about sound, and the sound can move in either direction. This was where I had room, and so this is the way that I mounted them. The final result was an exhaust that definitely sounded different. When the vehicle was idling, when you first fired up, it doesn't sound bad. It just has a general different sound. Once you add a little RPM, it sounds like a normal vehicle. And the beauty of it was when I stepped on it, got it up to the 2000 RPM, the RPM at which my car likes to cruise, there was no drone. I am extremely happy that this was a successful solution to fixing the drone in my car. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.